So, dear friends, we were discussing regarding the Stuart Close philosophy in last lecture, and we started with directly with the chapter number eight, the general pathology of homeopathy. The concept of pathology, the modern science concept of pathology, and homeopathy concept of pathology. These are two different things, and these two different things one has to understand very clearly. In uh, modern science, we used to classify the pathology into two different types. The first variety is the general pathology and the second is the special pathology. Out of this general pathology and special pathology, again, we special pathology is divided into the internal pathology, which is called to be a medical pathology and external pathology, which is deal with the surgery, which is called as surgical pathology. But this is a material pathology where the things are rigid, material, you can find it out and you can label them. So whatever you learn in the pathology is not the true pathology because it is the end product as Stuart Close say and Hanneman says. These are end products. The inflammation is the end product of the disease. The disease is prior to it. The necrosis is the end product of it. The infarction is the end product of it, the cirrhosis is the end product, degeneration is the end product. These are not the diseases actually. Disease is much more prior to it and when such pathologies happen, they are always related with the chronic diseases. Whatever the true pathology which we have to learn is nothing but the learning this prior condition, the miasms, the causes of chronic diseases where this true pathology is hidden. And Stuart Clause considers and explains that in homeopathy, when we look towards those things, we have to understand this true pathology of homeopathy. And this is very, very important concept which he has tried to explain in this chapter. And he tried to explain many concepts of regarding the pathologies over there. So we'll go ahead with next paragraph on the page number 688. Homeopathic medical science views the facts of universe in general and medical facts in particular from vitalistic, substantialistic standpoint, that is from the standpoint of substantial philosophy, which regards all things and forces, including life and mind, as substantial entities having a real objective existence. In homeopathic philosophy, life and mind are the fundamental verities of the universe. So, homeopathy deals with not only with the material aspects, but as well as dynamic aspects. There are three schools of philosophies which we have discussed yesterday. The first is materialistic school of philosophy, which used to think about the material aspects of human mind. Second is the idealistic school of philosophy, which deals with the dynamic aspects of human mind. And the substantialist philosophy, which includes both the material as well as the dynamic. Homeopathy belongs to the substantialistic school of philosophy where we used to take into consideration the dynamic human being at the same time the material human being. And that's why it is quite easy to understand each and every pathological process with both the aspects, the cause in the form of dynamics and the end products in the form of some pathology. And this is what is called as a true pathology of homeopathy. And then he goes towards the next paragraph. Upon recognition of this basic fact, rests Hahnemann's doctrine of vital force, as set forth in the organon, about which there has been so much discussion. All doubts as to the Hahnemann's position is removed, and subject is placed beyond controversy, so far as he concerned by the final sixth revised edition of the organon, which is at last accessible to the profession. In this edition, Hahnemann invariably uses the term vital principle instead of vital force. Even speaking in one place of the vital force of the vital principle, thus making it clear that he holds firmly to the substantialistic view of life, that is, that the life is the substantial, objective entity, a primary, originating power or principle, and not mere condition or more of, mode of motion. From this conception arises the dynamical theory of disease upon which the be is based the animal's pathology. Vice versa, that the disease is always primarily a morbid, dynamical or functional disturbance of the vital principle. And upon this is reared the entire edifice of therapeutic medication governed by the law of similar as a selective principle. So see, 
what homeopathy considers regarding disease is very important and what homeopathy considers regarding the health of the human being that is also important when you talk about the health of the human being we used to take into consideration the vital principle the vital force which is generated because of the principle or first the vital energy is generated then vital force is generated then the mind is there and then what remains is the material body we used to take into consideration both the aspects and when we deal with this we consider that it is the man who is ill first when he is ill that means his vital principle is ill then it reflects in the form of some signs and symptoms the disease is the manifestation of it so one should not under one should not miss this understanding that disease is not the just a mere manifestation it is because of derangement of the vital force which is reflecting external in the form of signs and symptoms and whenever disease has to start it always starts at the functional level so the cellular changes never happens on day one gradually when it persists for longer time of duration then gradually it turns into the uh, tissue changes or cellular changes so this is always functional in origin and it happens basically at the dynamic level homeopathy consider this background as a pathology and the reason behind that homeopathy consider why this fellow's vital principle is diseased why he is succumb to such and such disease what may be the psychodynamics behind that case that those we used to learn and if we understand those then it is quite easy to treat that patient for ever with modern medicine when you deal with those pathologies you temporarily treats by removing the pathology but later on the recurrence is the rule the metastasis is the rule and because because they have considered only the material side of the disease not the original dynamic disorder which happens to be there so concept should be clear the pathology in from homeopathic point of view is hidden in the dynamics it's hidden in the miasms and if you are able to catch them then you can treat them if you are not able to catch them you cannot treat and this is what actually he wants to explain in in detail and whenever the patient comes to you with the functional symptoms recurrent again and again and if you find it out right totality find it out right homeopathic medicine give it to the patient that patient if cured at that level no further progression of the pathology develop then that patient gets cured completely and this is what he wants to explain in this parallel as this view leads to the radically different method of practice the necessity for special consideration of general pathology in its various department is evident in formulating his theory of chronic myasm sanemon did for the pathology what he had already done for therapeutics he reduced great mass of unsystematized data to order by making classification based upon the general principle so when hanemann considered all those things he started explaining about our diseases when he started practice there are many names given to the disorders there are varieties of the names and that's why it was not easy how to treat and there was no rational treatment available hanemann was first who started the classifying the diseases he broadly classifies under the four heading the first variety under which he has classified where the cause was external where the cause was not internal where the cause was some external cause and those he has grouped under one heading and then whatever the chronic disease is remaining then he further classified them into the three different parts and that is nothing but the um, sora psychosis and syphilis because of which it is quite easy for us to treat any pathology if a patient comes with cancer it should stuck our mind that cancer is nothing but the psychosyphilitic miasm it is in between state between the psychosis and syphilis if we understand cancer miasm and then if we take the case the totality and we if we repertorize there are, there are there is a group of four five remedies comes then you have to select remedy which covers that miasm if we are not able to catch that then we cannot cure 
many times it happens the symptoms are very close to the remedy but they are very superficial if the patient comes to you he tell told you that doctor i am having this one sided headache since right sided headache since last one and a half years and now i cannot sleep it is continuous one years back when it was started it was just throbbing and throbbing and throbbing and uh, it used to happen once in 15 days later it has started appearing once in a week two months back it was happening nearly about once in 2 3 days but now the things are rather changed i have taken many painkillers he showed you he has taken migraineal on day one when it has it has started he has done the mri nothing found everything normal and this patient comes to you and this patient comes to you with severe headache if you ask to do the m repeat mri and now you find the mri contains the a uh, tumor over there inside the head the patient who was not having a tumor one years back if you would have treated with homeopathy with right similimum the further process would have not happened but now patient is there in front of you having the similar manifestations but it is continuous mode of manifestations are there and he is suffering from that tumor then how will you treat that if you want to treat that then you require the remedy which has that capacity to remove the tumor that should have that miasm in background then and then it happened so if you select belladonna nothing can happen because belladonna is the remedy from acute miasm but for such a patient if symptoms matches if the miasm matches if whole thing appears and if you get a remedy which has that much of depth like natramure like whatever then if you give then it has the capacity to remove those that disorder and gradually the pathology also for that purpose it is necessary to understand the diseases under which heading it comes hanuman made this very easy and this is what he is explaining in formulating his theory of chronic myasms hanuman did for the pathology what he had already done for therapeutics He reduced great mass of unsystematized data to the order by making classification based upon general principles. This classification of phenomena of disease led to the broadest generalization in pathology and etiology that has ever been made, and greatly simplified and elucidated the whole subject. And this is the big thing what Hanneman has done: the classification of chronic diseases, chronic maladies. and because of which it is rather simple to treat all those disorders in day to day practice because because the work done by hanuman at that time is a wonderful work which he has done hanuman's generalization was based upon his new far reaching discovery the existence of living specific infectious microorganism as the cause of greater parts of the all true diseases see what what he is explaining is very important what he is saying Hanuman's generalization was based upon his new and far-reaching discovery: the existence of living, specific, infectious microorganisms as the cause of greater part of all true diseases. This was done by Hanuman without microscope. He was not having his own microscope, and still he reached to, because microscope discovery was not there, he reached to that conclusion with his logic, and that's why in the aphorism number 72 he has classified the acute diseases into four varieties out of which first variety is individual second is sporadic third is epidemic and fourth is endemic out of which he explains first two are de- dependent upon either exciting cause or environmental cause but remaining two are caused because of acute miasm that word he has used and from hanemanian thought these are nothing but the microorganisms which are not visible to the naked eye to the human being they are but they are present and to which he has utilized name acute miasm so he was he was the first one who understood that these communicable diseases are caused because of such microorganism and that was a big thought which was not easily digestible to the people because you are you don't have anything to show it to the people this is the cause of this the history of progress of natural 
history shows how men first approach nature, how the facts have been collected, and how these facts have been converted into science by successively broader and broader generalization, leading to the discovery of basic law of nature. There were many things happening when Hahnemann was there, many things happening. Science was in the development phase. Many papers, they were making many more experiments. There was one person called Cuvier, whose name was Cuvier, and who, class, who was working on the animal kingdom. And there were a lot of animals, and it was rather difficult to understand those animals. He was the first person during, it was the same era of animal. He was the first person who classified the animal kingdom into four types or four varieties. He classified it into vertebrates, he classified it into mollusks, he classified it into articulates and he classified it into the radiates. So, he has classified the whole animal kingdom into four types. Hahnemann was in the same era. There was one more person, person called named Carl Linnaeus, who classified the plant kingdom in the similar era into four types. So this, this was very important to understand. Hahnemann took the thought from them and considered we must classify the diseases. And that's why he started thinking about it, he started working about it and he classified them. So this is this was the era which was development of the science was going on. Hahnemann was the first one to think about it. So history of progress of natural history shows how men first approach nature, how the facts were, have been collected, and how these facts have been converted into science by successively uh, broader and broader generalizations, leading to the discovery of basic law of nature. And this was happening. Then what has happened? The work of Hahnemann in pathology may be compared to the Cuvier in zoology, who reduced the entire animal kingdom into four fundamental classes based upon the general characteristics and their inter internal structure. He classified animal kingdom into the vertebrates, mollusks, articulates, and radiates. See, these are the four important um, parts the queer has classified the animal kingdom. In the similar manner, Hahnemann classified the diseases. Until Cuvier's time, there was no great principle of classification. Facts were accumulated and more or less systematized, but they were not arranged according to the law. So there was no one who has classified the, such a thing before Cuvier, and Cuvier was the first. Hahnemann reduced all the phenomena of chronic diseases according to their, their causes, to the four fundamental classes. The first variety, the occupational or drug diseases, then second, sora, the syphilis third, and fourth, psychosis. Similar to the Cuvier. He classified the diseases into four different types. First, he variety is either occupational disease or either it is called as a drug disease because, caused because of drugs which were given. And then whatever remaining where the sora, syphilis, and psychosis. So this was the big thing which Hahnemann done, have done in his life. Because this classification made uh, by Hahnemann is very useful in today with our practice. Because of which it is very easy to cat categorize that patient, whether the patient is soric, whether the patient is psychotic, whether the patient is syphilitic, whether the patient is soropsychotic, whether the patient is soropsychosyphilitic, or it is psychosyphilitic, or it is soropsychosyphilitic. We can understand that on the basis of that. And because of which, the management which we decide in our mind with the logic becomes simple. So classification was necessary and Hahnemann was the first one who classified the diseases into these chronic diseases into these four types. Taking the entire mass of morbid phenomena, he first eliminated all the numerous symptoms and so-called diseases which are merely local, temporary and functional in persons otherwise healthy due to the non-specific causes such as indiscretions in diet or regimen mechanical injuries, undue exertions, or indulgences, or emotional excesses, etc. 
Such conditions are not true diseases, but mere indisposition, which disappear of themselves under ordinary circumstances when the cause is removed, or yield easily to the correcti corrective hygienic, dietetic, moral, and mechanical measures. So, how he started classifying them? What he has done? First, he has classified certain disorders which look to be a superficial, where there is no specific internal cause, but something exciting has been happened, where the cause is because of fault in diet, where the cause is because of fault in daily regimen, where the cause is because of some external stimulant, and you know the cause behind it which he has classified under the head indisposition. And indispositions of mild character never requires medicine. It only requires to correct what is whatever is wrong. If diet is wrong, correct the diet. If regimen is wrong, correct that. If there is some exciting factor, remove that. So it's so simple to categorize and make it simple to treat. Hello. So basically, it is so simple to understand the disorders because of which, because of classification. So one must know it. So this is the first thing which Hanuman have done. They ordinarily require no medicine. In this class of cases are included many of so-called occupational diseases caused because of exposure of healthy persons to the noxious influences incidental to the environment or vocation such as unsanitary dwelling, exposure to fumes and emanations from the chemicals, absorption of minerals such as lead or copper. So under this big heading, he had added indispositions or occupational hazards, occupational diseases. The diseases which are caused because of some something entered in your body in the material form. So, if you get the fumes and you get the cup, you know it is the cause. If you are taking the tobacco and you know that you are having white ulcers, where the disorder is caused because of some external factor and not because of internal dynamic change. It is basically the cause which is hidden externally and these he has kept it under the one big heading, either occupational diseases or the drug diseases. And many of the drugs which were used during Hanuman in time, they were given, given in a big, larger doses, which used to cause a trouble. So he has given many examples. He has given the examples of fumes. He has given the examples of emendation. And then he explained, the treatment of such conditions involves merely the removal of the cuts and the some cases antidoting the poisons chemically and dynamically. So when the cause is in material form, the line of treatment always remains to be the material. So logically, if something enters in your body, you have to remove it by mechanical means. You have to remove it by antidote. So first variety he has classified. And that, that becomes simple task. Then he turned to the rest of the disorders, which we will going to learn in tomorrow's session. So this, if you understand this, classification and understanding of pathology, the concept of pathology in homeopathy, then it becomes rather simple to prescribe for the patient. The concepts which Close has explained and elaborated over there are wonderful. So my suggestion to all of you, go through that, understand them properly, and then you will you will become more confident to prescribe your remedies. So that's all for today. Today evening, we'll continue with the Pulsatilla, which we have discussed part of it in yesterday's lecture at 8 o'clock. Today also, we'll continue with the Pulsatilla and we'll finish the Pulsatilla in today's session. So be there to learn the Pulsatilla also. And thank you being there for this session.